Welcome to our third and final video in the series on systematic reviews and meta-analyses where we are applying our knowledge of SRMEs in a critical review of one. In the first two videos, we walk through reading and reviewing the conduct of the systematic review and of the meta-analysis. In this video, we will be attempting to perform a great assessment of our certainty in the evidence presented. My only disclosure is that I am currently a MITAX Elevate postdoctoral fellow jointly funded by the Government of Canada and the Canadian Sugar Institute. As a reminder, the example we are using in this exercise is entitled Food Sources of Fructose Containing Sugars and Glycemic Control, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Controlled Intervention Studies, and was published in the British Medical Journal in 2018. I encourage you to continue with your own selected SRMA. However, if you want to use my example to follow along, you can find it on the CSI website under the links to the videos for the series. Please remember you will need the online supplement or appendix as it contains important information. The worksheet I have created for us to make notes on throughout this exercise is also found on the CSI website under the video links. Now, let's take together everything we have read from our SRMA and evaluate how confident we are in the overall conclusions drawn. To do this, we will perform a quick and approximate grade assessment. It is becoming more common for SRMAs to actually perform and present grade assessments or some other grade type method to assess the certainty of evidence. This was done in my example, but I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through it so you can understand the steps in how it was performed and you can perform it for your own selected SRMA as well. Depending on the studies included in your SRMA, this determines what grade level you start with. So since my example was in controlled trials, I start with a grade of high. Recall that we are continuing with our example using the analysis of the outcome HbA1c in the substitution trials. And this is what we're going to use to perform our grade assessment. Each outcome and analysis with its own set of conclusions should be rated individually for the certainty of evidence and this confidence in those results. So on page four of your worksheet, record in section one what grade level you would start with for your SRMA example. As a hint, refer to what was responded to in question one on page one of the worksheet. So for our example, we are starting with a grade level of high since it is an SRMA of controlled trials. Now we need to look through each of the following factors to see whether or not you would downgrade from the starting level which in our example is high. Starting with the risk of bias assessments, we need to consider whether we would judge that there is a serious concern which would justify downgrading our certainty in the overall conclusion drawn from the data. In my example, the risk of bias assessments from each individual study are presented in the far right-hand column of the FORS plot for substitution studies on HbA1c. As you can see, there is very little red overall, thus very few studies were assessed as having high risk of bias. Further, in the risk of bias subgroup analyses, as you can see in the far column to the right, none of these subgroups were significant. So risk of bias did not modify the effect. Therefore, overall, I would conclude that there is no serious concern resulting from the risk of bias assessment of individual study quality, and therefore I would not downgrade for risk of bias. How would you rate your SRMA based on the factor of individual study limitations or risk of bias? Note that if no ROB was performed or risk of bias was performed, you cannot assess this factor. So take a minute to review this section and the information you previously recorded on it 
and record your notes under section two on page four of your worksheet. Next, let's review the heterogeneity in the meta-analysis. In my example, the heterogeneity was substantial and significant. And recall that neither the sensitivity nor the a priori subgroup analyses explained any of the heterogeneity. Did your SRMA have significant heterogeneity in the main analysis? If yes, was it explained by any sensitivity or a priori subgroup analyses? Review and record your responses in section three on page four of your worksheet. In my example, since there was significant unexplained heterogeneity, I would therefore downgrade the evidence for serious concern resulting from inconsistency due to unexplained heterogeneity. So, I started at high, and now I am downgrading the evidence to moderate due to unexplained heterogeneity. In your worksheet, under the column of downgrade, indicate yes, downgrade, if you judge that you would for your SRMA, or no, if you do not think you would downgrade. Then in the column grade, either bring down the grade level from what you have in section one if you decided to downgrade or record it at the same level if you decided not to downgrade. The next factor to assess is indirectness. Typically, this section is downgraded if the studies included may not directly answer the research question. For example, if there were only a few studies in the meta, let's say three studies, and all were conducted in young women, then I may downgrade for indirectness since my conclusions cannot be generalized to the general population since they really only apply to young women. Since in my example SRMA, in the substitution studies for HB1C, there were 30 trial comparisons with nearly 1,000 participants total and includes both men and women of a variety of ages. Recall that I got all this information from various figures and the tables of study characteristics. Then I may conclude that I do not feel there is a serious concern for indirectness and would thus not downgrade. Consider indirectness in your SRMA. Do you feel that the studies included in your SRMA provide data that is generalizable to the overall research question? Respond to the questions under section four in your worksheet and judge whether or not you would downgrade the outcome you are assessing in your SRMA for indirectness. Next is imprecision. This one is a bit more difficult to understand and perform, and different groups may interpret and assess this factor slightly differently. According to GRADE, for practice guidelines, grading down the quality of evidence, that is the confidence in estimates of effect, is required if clinical action would differ if the upper versus the lower bound of the confidence interval represented the truth. Thus, in our group, we have assigned a set of what we call minimally important differences for various outcomes which we have performed SRMAs on. These values represent the effect you would need to see in order for it to be clinically meaningful. So for example, for HbA1c, an effect of at least 0.3% is considered clinically relevant. So 
if the 95% confidence interval of the main effect overlaps 0.3%, we would downgrade for imprecision. You can also downgrade for imprecision if the 95% confidence intervals are very wide. Considering you may all have different outcomes, we won't really be able to assess this factor as a group. So we'll skip it for now. However, just to show you how this was done for my example, take a look at the 95% confidence interval for the overall total estimate of the effect. It overlaps a clinically meaningful reduction of 0.3%, meaning that the true effect may not be clinically meaningful. Thus, we would downgrade for imprecision. So for my example, now I am rating down again from moderate to low certainty of evidence due to serious concern for imprecision. Next is publication bias. Recall whether you found publication bias in your SRMA. If it was not significant, you do not rate down. If it was significant and there was a method applied to address it, like a trim and fill analysis, which demonstrated no significant small study effects, then you would not downgrade. However, if there was significant publication bias and the methods to address it indicated that there were small study effects, meaning that imputing missing studies, which represent unpublished studies, gave a significantly different conclusion, then you would downgrade. Review your notes on publication bias and answer the questions in section six in your worksheet. Note in my example, there was no significant publication bias in the substitution studies on HB1C. Therefore, I would not downgrade. Lastly, for the factors to rate up, these are typically assessed for SRMA of cohorts and even then are very rare in nutrition studies. Significant dose response gradients could, could be judged as reasons for upgrade in SRMAs of trials if they provide compelling evidence according to the grade group. In the interest of time and complexity, we will not review these today. So overall, in my example, we started at a grade of high since my example was of controlled trials. We then rated down for inconsistency due to unexplained heterogeneity, and then down again for imprecision due to the 95% confidence interval of the overall total effect estimate crossing what we considered the minimally important difference. Thus, the overall grade was low for the effect of fructose-containing sugars on HbA1c and substitution trials. In my example, they did perform a grade assessment. Here you can see the grade table in table two. And just as we determined, the evidence was downgraded for inconsistency and imprecision, resulting in an overall rating of low certainty of evidence. Now let's review what that grade level means. In our example, an overall rating of low means that this research provides some indication of the likely effect. However, the likelihood that the effect will be substantially different from what the research found is high. This is supported by the author's conclusions that more high quality studies are needed to clarify the effects. As we wrap up, 
review your approximate grade assessment and indicate what grade level you determined for the evidence on the outcome you assessed in your SRMA. So perform section eight in your worksheet. Consider whether you feel that this corresponds to generally how confident you feel in the conclusions drawn. Does this impact how you will now read SRMAs? Between the first series of videos, when we discussed the value and purpose of SRMAs and reviewed the important steps in their conduct, and through this series of videos, where we performed an exercise in reading and critically assessing ASRMA, I hope you feel as though you have a greater understanding of how to read and interpret SRMAs. I'd like to acknowledge my mentors and lab group as many of these slides have been developed and shared by members of our team. And thank you for all your participation.